What is a spectrum and what are continuous and line spectra? Newton showed that when white light is passed through a prism it is split into a spectrum of all colors from violet through red. There were no gaps between the colors, so the spectrum is called continuous. The emission line of sodium has only two yellow lines. Hydrogen has four lines. The spectrum of iron on the other hand, has an extremely large number of lines. An absorption line spectrum occurs when the low-density gas absorbs distinct colors, leaving dark gaps in the otherwise continuous spectrum. For example, the spectrum that the German physicist Joseph von Fraunhofer 1787 to 1826, took of the spectrum of the sun in 1814 showed 574 dark lines. In 1859 they were explained as being absorption lines from the cooler gases in the sun's atmosphere. Fraunhofer made the best optical glass of any glassmaker of his era. He made great improvements to the achromatic lens, which refracts light of all colors the same amount. Like most glassmakers of his era, he died young. Most likely from the poisonous effects of the materials used to make the glass. What is nuclear fission? Radioactive nuclei can decay in another way they can split in two. This process is called spontaneous fission. Fission can also be produced artificially by bombarding nuclei with low-energy neutrons. In fact, fission was discovered in this manner. When was magnetism discovered? The discovery of rocks that attracted certain metals is lost to history. As was the case with electrostatics, Aristotle, 384 to 322 BCE, credited Thales of Miletus, 625 to 545 BCE with the first scientific discussion of the attractive power of the rock later called lodestone the word magnet comes from the region of Greece where lodestone is found but the power of lodestone was found by other people around the same time at the time of Thales' life an Indian surgeon, Sushreta, used magnets to aid surgery. In the 4th century BCE the Chinese Book of the Devil Valley Master says lodestone makes iron come. In the 11th century CE the Chinese scientist Chen Kuo wrote about the use of a magnetized needle as a compass in navigation. By the next century the Chinese were known to use a lodestone as a shipboard compass. One hundred years later the British theologian, Alexander Neckham, described the compass and how it could be used to aid navigation. Some people thought that the pole star attracted the compass. While others thought that the source was a magnetic island near the North Pole. In 1269, the Frenchman Petrus Peregrinus wrote a detailed paper on the properties of magnets. But the most comprehensive and famous work was written by William 
Gilbert in 1600. Gilbert concluded that Earth was a giant magnet. What are the limits of the Bohr model? Today's model is totally different from Bohr's 1913 model. Bohr's model could explain only the spectra of hydrogen and helium from which an electron was removed. With some modifications is could also explain the spectra of the alkalis like lithium. From 1913 through 1926 physicists tried to extend the model, with some successes. But the lack of a physics-based explanation of the postulates led to Research aimed at a model that was not based on classical ideas like Bowers. One of the first steps was taken by the young German physicist Werner Heisenberg, 1901-1976. What elements beyond uranium have been discovered? Elements 113 to 118 have temporary names until the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry decides on the name. The number of atoms detected in the decays of elements 113 to 118 vary between a dozen down to even one. In the search for element 117 a total of 1,019 CA ions bombarded the Californium target and resulted in three atoms of element 117 elements up through Californium 98 have been produced in milligram or gram quantities. They have been used as target materials for the accelerators that bombard them with ions in the search for heavier elements. The estimated cost of producing enough Einsteinium, 99, to be used as a target is $50 million. Is light a wave or a particle? light, and other forms of electromagnetic radiation, has the properties of both a particle and a wave. As a wave it is described by its wavelength, frequency, amplitude, and polarization. It has the ability to diffract and interfere. As a particle it has energy, momentum, and angular momentum. It has the ability to be emitted and absorbed. And to scatter off other particles, transferring energy and momentum. In some experiments it acts like a wave in part of the experiment and a particle in other parts. For example, if you put a beam of light through a pair of narrow, closely spaced slits. The so-called Young two-slit experiment, you get an interference pattern with alternating stripes of light. Where the light through the two slits constructively interferes, and darkness where the interference is destructive. If you now greatly reduce the intensity of the light and use a detector that can detect individual photons you will have regions where a large number of photons arrive and others where none arrive. The regions are exactly where the dark and light stripes were. If the intensity is so low that there is only one photon in the 
apparatus at a time how can the dark and light regions be understood? Particles can't split, with half going through one slit. Half through the other so the two halves interfere. If you try to modify the experiment so you can tell through which slit the photon came you destroy the interference pattern. Physicists have grappled with this mystery for decades. There are no easy explanations. Perhaps the fault lies with our language and thinking. We simply do not have the correct words or mental concepts to describe and understand how light works. Does light interact with an atom as a wave or a particle? A wave carries energy continuously over time. The more energy in the wave, the faster the energy is transferred. A particle, on the other hand, delivers its energy all at once. When an atom either absorbs or emits light, the transfer is almost instantaneous. Therefore light interacts with an atom like a particle. The idea that light comes in packets of energy was first stated by Albert Einstein. 1879-1955, in 1905. He called the packet a light quantum. The quantum was given the name photon in 1926. The photon has no mass or charge. But it does carry angular momentum. It always moves at the speed of light, see. Each photon carries an amount of energy E equals HF, where F is its frequency. Therefore a photon of blue light has more energy than one of red light. The energy carried by a beam of light depends both on the frequency and the number of photons per second leaving the source. What is a GFI, or ground fault interrupter? A ground fault interrupt outlet is now required by building codes for outlets within 6 feet of a sink or in any other environment where water could be close to the outlet. Normally the currents in the black and white wires will be equal. But if the water provides an alternative current path, then the two currents will no longer be the same. The GFI detects this difference and shuts off the circuit within milliseconds. GFIs should be tested periodically to make sure the electronic circuit is still working. Are emission and absorption the only ways light interacts with an atom? In 1917 Albert Einstein proposed a third way light could interact with an atom. If a photon with the correct energy struck an atom in the excited state then the atom would be stimulated to emit an additional photon and drop to the lower energy level. The two photons leave with the same energy, in terms of a wave same wavelength, and in phase. Are electrons waves or particles?
the electrons in an atom are not confined to one region of space, but are spread out. They are acting more like waves than particles. In Louis de Broglie's 1892-1987-1924 doctoral thesis he proposed that electrons behave like waves with a wavelength given by x equals h slash mv. Where h is Planck's constant, and m and v the mass and velocity of the electron. The thesis was forwarded to Einstein, who enthusiastic ally endorsed the idea and recommended that the thesis be approved. De Broglie was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1929 for this work. The de Broglie wavelength is associated with any particle. Although for an object the size of a baseball it is much smaller than the diameter of a nucleus. The de Broglie wavelength of a particle determines its wave-like properties. Just as light photons interfere with themselves in a two-slit experiment, so do particles. The interference of electrons, atoms, and even molecules as large as C60, so-called buckyballs has been observed, and the measurements fit de Broglie's wavelength perfectly. So, both matter and light can act like either a particle or a wave. This phenomenon is given the name wave-particle duality. What is the origin of gamma rays? Gamma rays, high energy photons, or short wavelength electromagnetic waves, are emitted from the nucleus along with an alpha or beta decay. When an alpha or beta decay produces a daughter nucleus, that nucleus is often in an excited state. One or more gammas are emitted as the nucleus settles down to its lowest energy, or ground state. Gammas are like high-energy X-rays, but are emitted from the nucleus, not the electrons, of an atom. What nuclear force is responsible for beta decay? The weak nuclear force is the cause of beta decay. It is 10 to 13, 110 trillionth, as strong as the strong force. As a result the half-life of most beta decaying nuclei is long. In 1968 Abdu Salam, Sheldon Glashow and Steven Weinberg showed that the electromagnetic force and the weak nuclear force were actually different aspects of a single force, the electroweak force. In what ways do atoms emit and absorb light? In the mid-1800s Robert Kirchhoff published three laws that describe how materials emit and absorb light. 1. A hot solid or a hot, dense gas produces a continuous spectrum. 2. A hot, low-density gas produces an emission line spectrum. 3. A continuous spectrum source viewed through a cool. Low density gas produces an absorption line spectrum. Why is it dangerous to operate electrical devices in bathtubs, showers, and over full sinks?
Although water reduces the resistance of the human body and thus makes it more susceptible to electrical shock. It is the plumbing that is the main hazard. Tick. For example, a person who likes to watch a plugged in TV while sitting in the bathtub. If the TV is not connected to a GFI protected circuit and fell into the tub. The water would come in contact with the 120 volt wires in the TV. With the metal plumbing of the tub connected to ground. The grounding path would cause a current through the water. Unfortunately, this translates into a bad day for the bather. An MP3 player or battery powered smartphone is much safer. Many outlets have three holes. What is the purpose of each hole? Outlets have two slots, one longer than the other, and a D-shaped hole. The contacts in the shorter slot are connected to a black wire. This is the hot connection that carries the 120 volts. The contacts in the longer slot are connected to a white wire, called the neutral wire. The white wire is connected to ground in the electric distribution box. Thus there is a potential difference of 120 volts across the two contacts. The third hole is attached to a green wire that is at ground potential. How can the emission and absorption of light by atoms be explained? In 1911 Niels Bohr 1885 to 1962, a Dane who recently had received his Ph.D. from the University of Copenhagen, joined Rutherford at Cambridge University. He quickly began work on the Rutherford model. He published his results in 1913, basing them on three postulates. One electrons only move in certain allowed orbits at discrete radii and with specific energies. That is, their radii and energies are quantized. When in these orbits their radii and energies are constant. The atoms do not emit or absorb radiation. Two electrons gain or lose energy when they jump from one allowed orbit to another. Then they emit or absorb light with a frequency given by HF equals E2, EI where E2 and EI are the energies of the electrons in the allowed orbits. The constant H is called Planck's constant, 6.6 x 10 to 34 J slash hertz, joules per hertz. 3. The correspondence principle. When the electron is very far away from the nucleus classical physics must give the same answer as the new quantum physics. He later changed the third postulate from the correspondence principle to requiring that the angular momentum of the electron be quantized, that is proportional to an integer called the quantum number. The results didn't change, but the derivation of them was more straightforward. This method is presented in almost every textbook. The two drawings below illustrate the emission of light when the electron goes from a higher energy to a lower energy orbit and the absorption of light when the electron's energy is increased. 
In 1885 Johann Balmer had found a formula that accurately calculated the wavelengths of the visible hydrogen spectrum. It was purely empirical that is, there was no physics-based explanation of it. In 1888 Jana Rydberg generalized Balmer's results to allow calculation of hydrogen emission in the ultraviolet and infrared. Bauer was able to explain Balmer's and Rydberg's formulae using the results of his postulates. The equation for the wavelength of the emitted radiation is 1 slash x equals r, i slash m2, 1 slash n2. The numbers m and n are the quantum numbers of the two energy levels. For example, the red line would have m equals 2, n equals 3. The constant r is 0.01097 nm1, making the wavelength of the red line 1 slash, 0.01097, v4, 1 ninth, nm1, equals 656.3 nanometers, in excellent agreement with the experiment. Thus Bower's model is a major advance in understanding the structure of the atom. How did probability rather than certainty enter into the model for the atom? In 1926 the Austrian physicist Erwin Schrödinger, 1887-1961 published an equation for a wave function that describes the probability of finding an electron at a particular position. It agrees with Bohr's model in that the most probable radius for an electron is that given by the Bohr model. And the energy of the electron is the same as Bohr calculated. But its results are fundamentally different. The solution of Schrödinger's equation can be shown as a probability. Cloud that shows the most probable locations for the electron. The n equals 1 state of the hydrogen atom is small and spherical. There are two n equals two states. The s state has angular momentum zero and another spherically symmetric cloud. The p state, with angular momentum one has two most probable locations, the top and bottom. The n equals three state has three possible angular momenta, zero, one, and two the d state. With angular momentum equals 2, has four angular regions with high probability. Red light is emitted when the electron goes from the n equals 3p state to the n equals 2s state. The lifetime of the higher energy state is very short, less than one billionth of a second. So when many atoms emit the light, the energy they emit is spread out the energy from any particular atom cannot be precisely predicted. How can these two forces that are so different in strength and range be unified? It only happens at extremely high energies, corresponding to a temperature of 1015 K. Such as occurred in the first few moments after the Big Bang or in an accelerator. They received the 1979 Nobel Prize for their work.
What happens to an element when it decays by emitting an alpha particle? The nucleus that results from a radioactive decay is called the daughter. The number of nucleons in a radioactive decay does not change, and in an alpha decay the number of protons of the original must equal the number of protons in the daughter plus the number of protons in the alpha. The same is true for the number of neutrons. So, for example, when uranium-238, with 92 protons and 146 neutrons emits an alpha. The daughter has 90 protons and 144 neutrons. It is thorium-234. The alpha is emitted with a specific energy. Only very heavy nuclei decay by alpha decay. What is a magnetic field? Just as the gravitational field is the region around a massive object that causes the attractive force on another object with mass. A magnetic field is the region around a magnet that causes forces on magnetic materials or other magnets. What is antimatter? In 1932 Carl Anderson, 1905 to 1991 was studying particles produced when cosmic rays struck lead sheets in a cloud chamber that was in a magnetic field he found low mass particles that curved the opposite direction from electrons showing that they had positive charge he later confirmed the existence of these particles by using a laboratory source of high-energy gamma rays. This positive electron was named the positron and was the first form of antimatter found. Anderson shared the 1936 Nobel Prize for his discovery. When a gamma ray with sufficient energy strikes matter it can produce an electron-positron pair. Energy is converted into particles with mass. The minimal amount of gamma ray energy needed is given by Einstein's famous equation. A gamma equals molectron 2 plus positron 2. The unchanged arc gamma produces a negatively charged electron and a positively charged positron, so electric charge is conserved. Positrons are also emitted in radioactive decay of isotopes that have a deficit of neutrons. For example, stable carbon exists as 12C or 13C, 6 protons and either 6 or 7 neutrons. As was discussed above, 14C decays by emitting an electron. One of the neutrons changes to a proton with the emission of the electron and antineutrino. On the other hand, 11C, with only 5 neutrons, is a positron emitter. One of the protons changes to a neutron with the emission of a positron and a neutrino. When a positron strikes matter the positron and an electron annihilate each other, producing two or three gammas. Particles with mass are converted to energy. How is antimatter used in medicine?
a three-dimensional image that shows biological activity in a person can be made using PET. Or positron emission tomography. PET uses a short-lived positron emitting isotope, typically 11C, 13N, 15O, or 18F. The isotope is chemically attached to a molecule that is involved in the activity that is to be studied. Flu ID containing that molecule is injected into the person and after enough time. Passes for the molecule to reach its target, the person is put into the PET machine. The positron that is emitted by the decaying nucleus strikes an electron and decays. Into two gammas that are simultaneously emitted back to back, that is, 180 degrees apart. Detectors record the arrival of the two gammas. And computers extrapolate them back to the location of the gamma emission. When a sufficient number of events are recorded a three-dimensional image. Of the region where the biologically active molecule accumulated can be made. PET scans can be combined with CT or MRI scans to peer information. On the anatomy with biological activity for diagnostic purposes. What were some of Niels Bohr's accomplishments as an exemplary physicist and citizen? Bohr returned to the University of Copenhagen as a professor of physics in 1921. With the help of the government and the Carlsberg Beer Foundation he established the Institute of Theoretical Physics. Bohr's institute attracted all the major theoretical physicists from around the world for short visits or extended appointments. When the Germans occupied Denmark, Bohr made a daring escape. First to Sweden, then England, then the United States. He was a consultant in the atomic bomb development effort, but after the war he tried to get President Harry Truman. 1884-1972, and British leader Winston Churchill, 1874-1965, to agree to share the secrets of the bomb with all countries. Including the Soviet Union. They both rejected Boer's proposal. But after the Soviets developed the bomb. Boer's ideas helped found the United Nations International Atomic Energy Agency. Until his death in 1962 he worked to reduce the threat of a nuclear war. In the centenary of his birth Denmark issued a postal stamp showing Boer and his wife, Margarethe. What is the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle? Heisenberg, together with Max Born and Pakal Jordan, tried a totally different approach using mathematical matrices. As part of their work Heisenberg developed a principle that demonstrates that in the atomic world our knowledge is limited. The uncertainty principle is written as ax aps equals h slash 4n. In words, the uncertainty of a particle's position times the uncertainty in its momentum is never less than Planck's constant divided by 4n. If it has a precise location, then its momentum and thus its speed, 
measured at the same time, must be imprecise. Planck's constant is extremely small. And so the uncertainty principle is important only for objects the size of atoms or smaller. The position and momentum of a baseball, for example, can both be precisely known at the same time. The uncertainty principle shows why Bohr's electron orbits cannot exist. If you know the radius of the circle precisely, then it must have some velocity along the radius smearing out its orbit. The uncertainty principle also exists in a form linking energy and time. In this form it says that if an electron is in a state that lasts for only a short time, then its energy is not precisely defined. What if the tool or appliance has a three-prong plug but you have only two slot outlets? Do not use the appliance if you do not have the proper outlet for the device. Cutting off the grounding prong will defeat the safety feature of the separate ground wire. What are the properties of magnets? You probably played with magnets since you were a child. It is likely that you found that magnets attract some materials but not others. You may have found that you can use a magnet to magnetize items like paper clips, nails, and screws. If you played with two magnets you found that they could either attract or repel each other. Whether you played with metal bar shaped magnets, rectangular or circular ceramic magnets. You found that the magnet exerted stronger forces at the ends or faces of the magnets. Those regions are called poles. If you hang the magnet from a string, so it can rotate freely you'll find the magnet orienting itself north to south. The end facing north is called the North Pole, the other the South. Like poles repel each other while unlike poles attract, but either end can attract other materials. Children often discover some of the properties of magnetism by playing with bar magnets and metal shavings. In this way, you can easily discover that magnets have opposite poles and create magnetic fields. Magnetic poles always come in north-south pairs called dipoles, two poles. Some theories predict the existence of isolated north or south poles, called monopoles. But, there have been extensive searches for monopoles over the past decades and none has ever been found. Could antimatter destroy the Vatican? In Dan Brown's novel Angels and Demons Physicists at CERN use the LHC. The Large Hadron Collider, to produce one-fourth gram of antimatter. The material was stolen in order to destroy the Vatican. It is true that if one-fourth gram of antimatter were to completely annihilate with one-fourth gram of matter the amount of energy produced would equal that of the bomb that destroyed Hiroshima. But, in over 10 years of experimental production only 10 million antiprotons 
have been trapped and stored for times ranging from seconds to months. One quarter gram is 1016 times as many antiprotons. Further, the antiprotons must be stored in extremely cold. Totally antiprotons are created in accelerators, where the accelerated particle is slammed into a metal target. Emitting gammas that create, in this case, proton-antiproton pairs. What is the island of stability? All the isotopes of elements beyond lead are radioactive. Some have lifetimes of tens of millions of years, while others are fractions of a second. Nuclear physicists and chemists know that isotopes that have magic numbers of neutrons or protons are more stable than others. They have proposed that very heavy isotopes with a neutron number around 180 and a proton number around 110 should be more stable than those with fewer or greater neutrons and protons. A glance at the table of elements beyond uranium shows that elements around 110 have longer lifetimes than others. But researchers have not yet been able to create isotopes with enough neutrons to reach this island. Where do X-rays come from? X-rays are electromagnetic waves of very short wavelength. Alternatively, they are very high-energy photons. They are emitted by atoms with many electrons, such as those high in the periodic table. The more electrons, the greater the charge of the nucleus. And the higher the energy of the electrons that are close to the nucleus, with n equals 1 or 2. Therefore, when the atom is disturbed, as it is in an X-ray tube when the anode is bombarded by high energy electrons. One of the n equals 1 electrons can be kicked out. When an n equals 2 electron loses energy and takes the place of the kicked out electron, an X-ray is emitted. What materials are attracted to magnets? Iron, nickel, and cobalt and most of their alloys are attracted to magnets. Other metals, like silver and gold, copper, tin, stainless steel, zinc. Brass and bronze are not attracted. Nonmetals are not attracted. Iron, nickel, and cobalt are called ferromagnetic. All materials respond to magnetic fields, but most respond so weakly that the forces are hardly felt. Those that are repelled are called diamagnetic, those attracted are paramagnetic. How did the study of beta decay result in the discovery of a new particle? In beta decay a nucleus emits an electron. The electron isn't in the nucleus originally, but results from the change of a neutron into a proton. 
Studies of the energy of the emitted electron showed that, instead of having a single energy like an alpha has, the energies of the electrons were spread from near zero to a maximum energy. Early investigators recognized that this suggested that energy was not conserved in beta decay. Austrian physicist Wolfgang Pauli, 1900-1958 proposed in 1930 that a second particle was emitted along with the electron. This particle had to be neutral and zero, or extremely small mass. And he named it the neutrino, or little neutral one. The neutrino wasn't detected experimentally until 1956. We now know that. The neutrino emitted in beta decay is actually an antineutrino. The question of its mass will be discussed in the chapter on unanswered questions. When a nucleus undergoes beta decay the number of protons increases by 1 as the number of neutrons decrease by 1. So, for example, carbon-14, 6 protons and 8 neutrons, becomes nitrogen-14, 7 protons and 7 neutrons. With the emission of the beta, electron, and an antineutrino. What materials make the strongest permanent magnets? Traditional permanent magnets were made of an alloy of aluminum, nickel, and cobalt, called alnico. Ceramic and rubber magnets use ferrites, an iron oxide material. In the 1980s the automobile companies searched for materials to reduce the weight of motors in their cars. They found an alloy of cobalt and samarium, a rare earth. Made strong, lightweight magnets, but were extremely brittle and expensive. Today the strongest magnets are made from a lanthanum iron boron, lib, alloy. Their strength can be as much as 20 times that of iron magnets. They are also brittle and so are coated with a plating of nickel and copper. Their price has fallen so much that they are used to hold sunglasses to eyeglass frames. In necklace clasps, and in children's toys. Are there uses for alpha decay? The decay of uranium and thorium produces all the helium that exists on Earth. Most of the helium is mixed with natural gas and is extracted from gas wells. It is expensive to separate and store the helium, but, given the increasing needs for this resource, for cooling superconducting magnets used in hospital MRI machines, it is an effort that must be made. Alpha-emitting radioactive elements are used in smoke detectors. The charged alpha particles leaving the element are collected on a metal plate where they produce a small electric current. Smoke scatters the alphas, reducing the current, and triggering the alarm. What is the little green wire or plate on the 3 to 2 adapter?
The green wire or metal tab attached to adapters is the grounding wire. Since the adapter is circumventing the ground prong, an alternate means of grounding is needed. If the screw on the outlet plate is grounded, the green wire on the adapter should be attached to it. This way, if there is an electrical short, the current can still flow through the grounding wire. If the screw is not grounded, then the adapter should not be used. An outlet tester that is available at most hardware stores can be used to make sure the screw is grounded. What causes materials to be attracted to magnets? The ultimate cause of magnetism is electrons. When electrons are in a magnetic field the forces they experience cause them to move in tiny circles. The circling electrons create their own magnetic fields that give rise to diamagnetism. Electrons are tiny magnets themselves, with north and south poles. In most atoms these magnets are paired so their fields cancel. But, if there are an odd number of electrons, the unpaired electron produces a paramagnet. Oxygen, for example, is paramagnetic. In ferromagnets the unpaired electrons in large groups of atoms interact with each other so that they point in the same direction. This group is called a domain. When a ferromagnet is put in a magnetic field the domains can line up with their poles facing the same direction, making the material a magnet. In most materials when the magnetic field is removed the domains revert to their former random directions and the material is no longer a magnet. For certain alloys, however, the domains remain aligned, resulting in a permanent magnet. Why do you need two connections at the ground potential? Because when the appliance plugged in draws current, there is current through both the black and white wires. Each wire has resistance, so there will be a voltage drop across the white wire and it will be above ground potential at the outlet. While this voltage will be small, it could be dangerous. The green wire, which carries no current, will remain at ground. It can be connected to the metal case of the appliance. Assuring that the case will remain at ground potential. When installing an electrical outlet, note that the green wire. Okay, you can't tell in this black and white photo, but it is there. Is the grounding wire, which must be attached to the grounding contact on the outlet. How was nuclear fission discovered? Italian physicist Enrico Fermi, 1901-1954 Was appointed professor at the University of Rome at the age of 24. Among many projects in which he and his group were involved, Perhaps none was more important than his studies of the reactions produced when slow neutrons struck nuclei. 
Fermi had discovered in 1934 that slowing Neutrons by passing them through paraffin greatly increased this ability to produce nuclear reactions. He did systematic studies of the results of bombarding a series of materials with slow neutrons. The German chemist Otto Hahn, 1879-1968, had a distinguished career that included inventing the field of radiochemistry in 1905 using chemical techniques and measurements of half-lives to study the results of nuclear reactions he had discovered dozens of isotopes and at least one element three times he was nominated for the nobel prize since 1907 he had collaborated with the austrian physicist lisa meitner 1878 to 1968 the teamwork between a physicist and a chemist was a great advantage. Hahn and Meitner, together with Hahn's young assistant Fritz Strassmann, 1902 to 1980, employed Fermi's slow neutron techniques to create nuclear reactions, and thus more isotopes. When, in 1938, they tried bombarding uranium with neutrons, they expected to create new elements beyond uranium in the periodic table. But they kept finding the element barium in the bombarded uranium. Starting in 1933, the Nazi regime forced people of Jewish origin out of all laboratories and universities. Meitner, who had Jewish parents but had converted to Protestantism in 1908, was protected because she was Austrian. But, when Austria was incorporated into Germany, she lost that protection. In July 1938, she took the train from Berlin to the Netherlands. Thanks to the intervention of two Dutch physicists she was allowed to leave Germany. But with no possessions. She soon moved to Sweden and kept up her collaboration with Han by mail. On December 17, 1938, Han and Strassmann submitted their findings for publication but admitted that they had no explanation for the appearance of barium. Meitner and her nephew Otto Frisch utilized Niels Bohr's liquid drop model. Of the nucleus and Einstein's E equals mc2 equation to propose that the nucleus had split into two. Releasing both extra neutrons and a large amount of energy. The Meitner Frisch paper was submitted a few days after Hans. Frisch returned to his laboratory in England and confirmed Hans' result in January. 1939 Hahn won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for his work in 1944, but Meitner never did. It was not long after scientists figured out how to create nuclear fusion that the Nazis began conducting research on how to turn this science into a powerful bomb. Albert Einstein and physicist Leo Szilard urged U.S. President Franklin D. Roosevelt start a program to complete a nuclear warhead before the Germans did. How was nuclear fission discovered? Italian physicist Enrico Fermi 1901-1954 was appointed professor at the University of Rome at the age of 24. Among many projects in which he and his group were involved, perhaps none was more important than his 
studies of the reactions produced when slow neutrons struck nuclei. Fermi had discovered in 1934 that slowing neutrons by passing them through paraffin greatly increased this ability to produce nuclear reactions. He did systematic studies of the results of bombarding a series of materials with slow neutrons. The German chemist Otto Hahn, 1879-1968, had a distinguished career that included inventing the field of radiochemistry in 1905, using chemical techniques and measurements of half-lives to study the results of nuclear reactions he had discovered dozens of isotopes and at least one element. Three times he was nominated for the Nobel Prize. Since 1907 he had collaborated with the Austrian physicist Lisa Meitner, 1878-1968. The teamwork between a physicist and a chemist was a great advantage. Hahn and Meitner, together with Hahn's young assistant Fritz Strassmann, 1902-1980, employed Fermi's slow neutron techniques to create nuclear reactions, and thus more isotopes. When, in 1938, they tried bombarding uranium with neutrons they expected to create new elements beyond uranium in the periodic table but they kept finding the element barium in the bombarded uranium. Starting in 1933, the Nazi regime forced people of Jewish origin out of all laboratories and universities. Meitner, who had Jewish parents but had converted to Protestantism in 1908, was protected because she was Austrian. But, when Austria was incorporated into Germany, she lost that protection. In July 1938, she took the train from Berlin to the Netherlands. Thanks to the intervention of two Dutch physicists she was allowed to leave Germany. But with no possessions. She soon moved to Sweden and kept up her collaboration with Han by mail. On December 17, 1938, Hahn and Strassmann submitted their findings for publication but admitted that they had no explanation for the appearance of barium. Meitner and her nephew Otto Frisch utilized Niels Bohr's liquid drop model of the nucleus and Einstein's E equals mc2 equation to propose that the nucleus had split into two releasing both extra neutrons and a large amount of energy. The Meitner-Frisch paper was submitted a few days after Hans. Frisch returned to his laboratory in England and confirmed Hans' result in January. 1939 Hahn won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for his work in 1944, but Meitner never did. It was not long after scientists figured out how to create nuclear fusion that the Nazis began conducting research on how to turn this science into a powerful bomb. Albert Einstein and physicist Leo Szilard urged U.S. President Franklin D. Roosevelt start a program to complete a nuclear warhead before the Germans did. Did physicists recognize the military uses of fission? Lisa Meitner had recognized that extra neutrons could produce a chain reaction that would produce a very large amount of energy. 
In early 1939 physicists from many countries attempted to create such chain reactions by slowing down the released neutrons. Among these were Enrico Fermi and a Hungarian-born physicist. Leo Szilard. They saw signs that such a reaction had occurred. In August 1939 Szilard drafted a letter to President Franklin D. Roosevelt, 1882-1945, that the German results could lead to in an extremely powerful new weapon. To give his letter more weight he convinced Einstein to sign the letter. It worked. Roosevelt directed the government to support fission research and created the Uranium Committee. While there were several important studies during the next three years, it was the British who made the breakthrough finding that the rare isotope uranium-235 could be used in a weapon. The Americans were informed but ignored the results until a personal visit by one of the British team members convinced the Uranium Committee of the need for action. The United States then established a new office that could authorize large-scale engineering projects. Enriched in uranium-235 created a need for enrichment plants. One method chosen had been developed in California. Uranium metal would be evaporated in a vacuum. The atoms went through a narrow slit and then into a region with a strong magnetic field. Because of their mass difference the two isotopes followed slightly different paths. The atoms condensed on the surfaces of separate containers. Dozens of giant machines, called calutrons, were built in a plant in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Chosen because abundant electricity was available from the nearby hydroelectric plants. Not enough copper was available to wind the coils for the magnets so 70,000. 000 pounds of silver bullion were borrowed from the U.S. Treasury to be formed into wires for the machines. Somewhat enriched uranium from the calutrons was then combined with fluorine to produce the gas U6. Because of the mass difference of the two isotopes 235U6 would diffuse through porous membranes slightly faster about 0.5% than its more massive counterpart. Thousands of separations were needed to produce weapons grade uranium, 85 to 90% 235 U. The plant at Oak Ridge built to accomplish this gaseous diffusion had an area of 2 million square feet. Employed 12,000 workers, and cost the equivalent of $6.2 billion in 1999 dollars. At one time it consumed 17% of all the electricity produced in the United States more than New York City. Did physicists recognize the military uses of fission? Lisa Meitner had recognized that extra neutrons could produce a chain reaction that would produce a very large amount of energy. In early 1939 physicists from many countries attempted to create such chain reactions by slowing down the released neutrons. Among these were Enrico Fermi and a Hungarian-born physicist. Leo Szilard. They saw signs that such a reaction had occurred. In August 1939 Szilard drafted a letter to President Franklin D. 
Roosevelt, 1882-1945, that the German results could lead to in an extremely powerful new weapon. To give his letter more weight he convinced Einstein to sign the letter. It worked. Roosevelt directed the government to support fission research and created the Uranium Committee. While there were several important studies during the next three years, it was the British who made the breakthrough finding that the rare isotope uranium-235 could be used in a weapon. The Americans were informed but ignored the results until a personal visit by one. Of the British team members convinced the Uranium Committee of the need for action. The United States then established a new office that could authorize large scale engineering projects. Enriched in Uranium 235 created a need for enrichment plants. One method chosen had been developed in California. Uranium metal would be evaporated in a vacuum. The atoms went through a narrow slit and then into a region with a strong magnetic field. Because of their mass difference the two isotopes followed slightly different paths. The atoms condensed on the surfaces of separate containers. Dozens of giant machines, called calotrons, were built in a plant in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Chosen because abundant electricity was available from the nearby hydroelectric plants. Not enough copper was available to wind the coils for the magnets so 70,000. 000 pounds of silver bullion were borrowed from the U.S. Treasury to be formed into wires for the machines. Somewhat enriched uranium from the calotrons was then combined with fluorine to produce the gas U6. Because of the mass difference of the two isotopes 235U6 would diffuse through porous membranes slightly faster, about 0.5%, than its more massive counterpart. Thousands of separations were needed to produce weapons grade uranium, 85 to 90 percent 235U. The plant at Oak Ridge built to accomplish this gaseous diffusion had an area of 2 million square feet. Employed 12,000 workers, and cost the equivalent of 6.2 billion dollars in 1999 dollars. At one time it consumed 17% of all the electricity produced in the United States more than New York City. Why was plutonium used in bombs? Plutonium is not found in nature, but it is produced in reactors by bombarding uranium-238 with neutrons. Plutonium-239, 239 PU, can be fissionated by slow neutrons, and so could be used in weapons. In December 1942, Hanford, Oregon, was chosen as a site for reactors that would produce plutonium. Hanford was selected because it was isolated but also on the Columbia River, which afforded a source of cooling water. Why was plutonium used in bombs? Plutonium is not found in nature, but it is produced in reactors by bombarding uranium-238 with neutrons. Plutonium-239, 239 PU, can be fissionated by slow neutrons, and so could be used in weapons. 
in December 1942, Hanford, Oregon, was chosen as a site for reactors that would produce plutonium. Hanford was selected because it was isolated but also on the Columbia River, which afforded a source of cooling water. How is uranium enriched today? Today ultracentrifuges are used for uranium enrichment. A centrifuge is routinely used in medical labs to separate materials of different density. The test tubes are spun rapidly and the denser materials move away from the center of rotation because it requires more centripetal force to pull them toward the center. A gas ultracentrifuge uses a rapidly rotating drum to separate the UF6 with the two isotopes. Gas centrifuges supply about 54% of the enriched uranium today. Each centrifuge is a more effective separator than a stage in a gaseous diffusion plant and requires only 6% of the electrical energy of gaseous diffusion. How is uranium enriched today? Today ultracentrifuges are used for uranium enrichment. A centrifuge is routinely used in medical labs to separate materials of different density. The test tubes are spun rapidly and the denser materials move away from the center of rotation because it requires more centripetal force to pull them toward the center. A gas ultracentrifuge uses a rapidly rotating drum to separate the UF6 with the two isotopes. Gas centrifuges supply about 54% of the enriched uranium today. Each centrifuge is a more effective separator than a stage in a gaseous diffusion plant and requires only 6% of the electrical energy of gaseous diffusion. What was done in Los Alamos? In September 1942, General Groves and Robert Oppenheimer chose Los Alamos, New Mexico, as the site for the top secret laboratory at which weapons would be developed. 35 miles northwest of Santa Fe. It was almost totally isolated and the site was occupied only by a school. During World War II hastily erected housing held Nobel Prize winning scientists. Younger scientists and engineers recruited into the project, wives and children, and soldiers. After determining the critical mass, the minimal amount of enriched uranium needed to create a bomb. They designed and built the uranium-based weapon called Little Boy. The uranium was divided into two halves and placed in a cannon-like container. An explosive charge drove the two masses together. Forming a large enough mass of uranium to sustain a rapid chain reaction and explode. This weapon was never tested. It contained 64 kilograms. 141 pounds of uranium, about 2.5 times the critical mass. Less than 1 kilograms, 2 pounds, of the uranium fissionide. 
only 0.6 grams, 0.001 pounds, was converted into energy. But the result was the equivalent of 15,000 tons of TNT. Little boy was dropped on Hiroshima, Japan. On August 6, 1945. Over 100,000 people were killed in the blast, resulting fires and effects of radiation. The second task of Los Alamos was to design and build a weapon using plutonium. Originally they had expected to use the cannon-type method used with the uranium bomb. But when the plutonium was produced by the Hanford reactors it was found to contain 240 PU. And another design had to be developed. They arranged a subcritical plutonium mass in the shape of a sphere and used specially designed explosive charges to simultaneously compress the plutonium, increasing its density above the critical point. Scientists were uncertain that the design would work, so they decided to test the device first. What was done in Los Alamos? In September 1942, General Groves and Robert Oppenheimer chose Los Alamos, New Mexico, as the site for the top secret laboratory at which weapons would be developed. 35 miles northwest of Santa Fe. It was almost totally isolated and the site was occupied only by a school. During World War II hastily erected housing held Nobel Prize winning scientists. Younger scientists and engineers recruited into the project, wives and children, and soldiers. After determining the critical mass, the minimal amount of enriched uranium needed to create a bomb. They designed and built the uranium-based weapon called Little Boy. The uranium was divided into two halves and placed in a cannon-like container. An explosive charge drove the two masses together. Forming a large enough mass of uranium to sustain a rapid chain reaction and explode. This weapon was never tested. It contained 64 kilograms. 141 pounds of uranium, about 2.5 times the critical mass. Less than 1 kilograms, 2 pounds, of the uranium fissionide. Only 0.6 grams, 0.001 pounds, was converted into energy. But the result was the equivalent of 15,000 tons of TNT. Little Boy was dropped on Hiroshima, Japan. On August 6, 1945. Over 100,000 people were killed in the blast, resulting fires and effects of radiation. The second task of Los Alamos was to design and build a weapon using plutonium. Originally they had expected to use the cannon-type method used with the uranium bomb. But when the plutonium was produced by the Hanford reactors it was found to contain 240 PU. And another design had to be developed. They arranged a subcritical plutonium mass in the shape of a sphere and used specially designed explosive charges to simultaneously compress the plutonium, increasing its density above the critical point. Scientists were uncertain that the design would work, so they decided to test the device first.
When was the first atomic device exploded? The gadget was a test version of the plutonium bomb. It was installed on the top of a 30 meter, 100 foot tower in the New Mexico desert at a location 35 miles southeast of Socorro, New Mexico, on the White Sands Proving Ground. The explosion, called Trinity, occurred on July 16, 1945. The energy yield was about 20,000 tons of TNT. More than twice what had been expected. The implosion type bomb was much safer and more effective than the cannon style little boy design and has been used for all other nuclear weapons. When was the first atomic device exploded? The gadget was a test version of the plutonium bomb. It was installed on the top of a 30 meter, 100 foot tower in the New Mexico desert at a location 35 miles southeast of Socorro, New Mexico, on the White Sands Proving Ground. The explosion, called Trinity, occurred on July 16, 1945. The energy yield was about 20,000 tons of TNT. More than twice what had been expected. The implosion type bomb was much safer and more effective than the cannon style little boy design and has been used for all other nuclear weapons. How was the plutonium bomb used? The plutonium bomb, named Fat Man for its shape, was dropped on the city of Nagasaki, Japan. On August 9, 1945, it contained 6.4 kilograms, 14 pounds, of plutonium-239, about 20% fissionide, and less than 1 gram was converted into energy with the equivalent of 21,000 tons of TNT. As many as 80,000 people were killed in the attack. How was the plutonium bomb used? The plutonium bomb, named Fat Man for its shape, was dropped on the city of Nagasaki, Japan. On August 9, 1945, it contained 6.4 kilograms, 14 pounds, of plutonium-239, about 20% fissionide, and less than 1 gram was converted into energy with the equivalent of 21,000 tons of TNT. As many as 80,000 people were killed in the attack. How many nations have nuclear weapons? The Soviet Union exploded a nuclear device in 1949. It was similar to FAT. Man and was built using information delivered to that country by spies. China, Britain, and France developed nuclear weapons in the 1950s. 
South Africa had nuclear weapons but abandoned the program. Israel is suspected of having weapons, but has never admitted it. India and Pakistan have both tested nuclear weapons. Iran and North Korea are suspected of developing nuclear weapons. By 1953 there had been 50 above-ground tests of nuclear weapons that created radioactive fallout. Contaminating milk and animals These effects alerted the public to the danger of such testing. The Cold War, however, created an atmosphere in which treaties could not be negotiated. In 1963 a partial test ban treaty was signed. Prohibiting tests in the atmosphere, underwater, and in space. In 1968 the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty was signed. Non-nuclear weapon states were prohibited from building or acquiring nuclear weapons. Many nations have signed the treaty, although some major states did not on the basis that it makes no effort to curb development by states that already have such weapons. In 1996 the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty was adopted by over two-thirds of the members of the United Nations General Assembly. The United States has signed but rejected ratification in 1999. Nevertheless, 337 facilities around the world monitor compliance with the treaty. They send data to a center in Vienna for analysis and distribution to the states that have signed the treaty. How many nations have nuclear weapons? The Soviet Union exploded a nuclear device in 1949. It was similar to FAT. Man and was built using information delivered to that country by spies. China, Britain, and France developed nuclear weapons in the 1950s. South Africa had nuclear weapons but abandoned the program. Israel is suspected of having weapons, but has never admitted it. India and Pakistan have both tested nuclear weapons. Iran and North Korea are suspected of developing nuclear weapons. By 1953 there had been 50 above-ground tests of nuclear weapons that created radioactive fallout. Contaminating milk and animals These effects alerted the public to the danger of such testing. The Cold War, however, created an atmosphere in which treaties could not be negotiated. In 1963 a partial test ban treaty was signed. Prohibiting tests in the atmosphere, underwater, and in space. In 1968 the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty was signed. Non-nuclear weapon states were prohibited from building or acquiring nuclear weapons. Many nations have signed the treaty, although some major states did not on the basis that it makes no effort to curb development by states that already have such weapons. In 1996 the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty was adopted by over two-thirds of the members of the United Nations General Assembly. The United States has signed but rejected ratification in 1999. Nevertheless, 
337 facilities around the world monitor compliance with the treaty. They send data to a center in Vienna for analysis and distribution to the states that have signed the treaty.